know why the Bible says to be transformed? Because your transformation puts you in a position where you have an array of scriptural options to accurately interpret that light you receive from your spirit. I presume that everyone here has a phone. This is the same technology that is used. Watch this now. How many of you remember a phone called, um, what they call it, 3310? Come on, 3310. Have you forgotten so early? Are we together? Now watch this. And then many of you know the concept of MMS. Is that true? There are times when I may want to send you an, NM, an MMS, maybe a picture saying, I love you, God bless you. And it is captured in pictorial form. Is that true? I can send it to you. Now watch this. The goal is for you to know that I care. Don't forget. The moment I press send, does it leave as a flower? No. It leaves as what? Waves. Notice that. You are not interested in the waves. You are interested in capturing the intent, that flower to give you a feeling of being loved and accepted. But it comes to your phone. Now notice, it will now depend on the configuration of your phone for the accuracy of its interpretation. <laughs> By the time those waves come into your phone, the quality of your phone can misrepresent what I sent. Is someone learning now? The phone will do its best to use whatever tools are within its reach to interpret what it thinks I send. And there are times you will be offended over something that should bless you. Could that be what has been your situation with God? That there are many times God is saying, listen, the direction is left, but because of the absence of transformation, you hear something else. When you upgrade that phone to a better phone, you will be surprised that you now see that MMS. Oh, this is what you wanted to say. Now you can respond with joy. So the Bible says, Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5, it says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. There was already a construct an intelligent word-based construct that even though Jesus was the word incarnate, he paid the price to equip his mind with the requisite vocabulary that interprets the speakings of God with accuracy. And Paul is saying, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Someone can sleep and there's what people call sleep talking. You know that? where people just say a lot of nonsense while they are sleeping. And if they wake up, they can deny it. Now, chances are excellent that if someone is shouting and talking about, say, a masquerade or something, someone who lives maybe somewhere in the U.S. who has never seen a masquerade, chances are excellent in his sleep talking. He may never mention the word masquerade because it's not captured within the frame of his understanding. Are we together now? Believers, please hear me. For as long as we ignore the supremacy of the word, for as long as we do not contend for transformation, there will be gaps in our perceiving the will of God as far as spiritual communication is concerned. The more you immerse yourself in the word, the more you are giving your mind healthy scriptural tools which wish to interpret the speakings, the light of God. So many believers assume this is one of the reasons why I get concerned when people who do not respect the word claim they are hearing God and even claim they are hearing for others. The margin of error, I will not trust that hearing. Do you know why? I'm, now I'm saying this is, this is an opinion that is based on scripture. I will not trust that hearing because the word of God is not the basis of your vocabulary composition. 
Chances are excellent that there will be gaps in your interpretation. Is the reason why, respectfully speaking, the prophetic has both blessed and cursed people because the light comes in the place of prayer, but because there is no adequate transformation, the interpretation of the speakings of God end up deviating people from the ways of God. Listen carefully. I believe in the prophetic, but let me tell you our generation, and I'm speaking prophetically to the body of Christ, especially those who are called into the apostolic and the prophetic ministry, pressing to the dimension of prayer will expose us to the realm of the spirit. And like you'll be learning in my subsequent sessions, there are many voices, Paul said, there is as it were many voices and none of them is without signification. So we need to verify whether what you heard is God. And we can't verify just by the pleasantness of what you heard. We first need to vet the word component that was resident in your mind as at the time you heard. Because Satan can appear as an angel of light. Listen, we are living in very perilous times where there is a heightened need for discernment. And discernment is not by superstition. Discernment happens at the instance of your stability through the word. You are grounded through the word. And on the basis of that stability, you can decipher by the character of scripture what is of God and what is not. For the Bible says the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith and they shall give heed to seducing spirits and the doctrine of demons. The character of seduction is that you must desire what it is bringing for it to be called seduction. There are many people who went to the place of prayer and returned back with speakings that were not of God. When you judge it from the lens of the authority of scripture, it is found wanting. And they took steps based on their interpretations of what they felt God was saying. And the result that we see is not the glory of God. Hmm. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you and we will never settle for less when we know there's more that's found in you and I will never settle for less I know there's more that's I've studied a bit on the history of the church in Nigeria. I'm a student of history and I'm a student of revivals. The reason is because I desire by the grace of God, like pastor so graciously prayed and said, and I'm so grateful for that, that compliment, sir. We intend to last and stay for a long time. So the goal is to find out the ingredients that sponsor longevity. And the way you do it is by following some them who through faith and patience have obtained. There are people who ran this race when others were laughing at them, ignoring the word. They stayed on the stability of scripture. And when the dust settled like the house that was built on the rock, most of them are standing today. Please hear me. Whether you are called into the apostolic the prophetic, the evangelical, the pastoral. If you do not contend for transformation, I guarantee you, you are at the risk of aborting longevity. Whether in life and ministry, gifts will come and go. Celebrity ministry will come and go. What will keep you? The Bible says the rains came, the floods came, all kinds of things came. But it was the house that was built. Both houses were built. The problem is not the building. The problem is what it is built on. Yeah. Hear me. If I never hear the voice of God in my spirit and I can respect the authority of the word of God, it is accurate enough to lead me with precision, prophetic precision. 
I'm not downplaying gifts. Listen carefully. The Bible says to covet earnestly, but I can tell you every other gift has not been tried, but the word of God has been tried seven times. In fact, the Bible calls it the most sure word of prophecy. I respect your administering spiritual gift to the degree to which you respect the authority of scripture. I'm saying this respectfully, especially for younger ministers that are coming up. The deception of gifts can, it, it can abort a great destiny overnight. Settle with the word. Obtain grace from God to settle with the word. Let the word dwell in you richly, he says. The degree to which the word of God has dwelt in you richly. In fact, Acts chapter 20 and verse 32 says, And now I commend you to God. Paul was speaking. And to the word of his grace, he says, Which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. Ephesians 4 18 says having their understanding darkened it says being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their minds is someone learning so the voice of God represents every spiritual channel that God is able to use to communicate his will and his intent. The most important component in the voice of God is not the speakings of God, but the safe transference of his intent from his heart to your heart. If that arrives safely, all the channels that midwife that process are only enhanced by the health of your mind. No matter how much you claim to hear God, if we do not see his will being done, as you obey what you perceive that you heard, we have a right from the authority of scripture to vet it. Are we together? The voice of God will always birth the will of God. I started by telling you that the power of God is principally responsible for the manifestation of all the possibilities that we find in the life of the believer, but that the power of God is jurisdictional in its operation. The jurisdiction of the power of God is the will of God. The power of God is not mandated to function outside the will of God. And if ever it functions outside of the will of God, is to bring that person or that situation into the will of God the end of the administration of the power of God the end of the speakings of God is that the will of God be established in the life of the believer if we're, if we're together say amen. amen Lord I pray that you find men and women in the midst of your people men who will be signs signposts showing men the possibilities that are captured in this divine life therefore i stretch my hands in the name of jesus christ by the election of grace i decree and declare that the grace that makes you a sign and a wonder in ministry in your profession in business in family may that grace rest upon you now May that grace rest upon you now. Rest upon you now. Your life ceases to be ordinary from tonight. A sign and a wonder. Your life becomes a Bible for many to read. A compendium of the manifold wonders of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Only a sure will reign forever. To his kingdom there'll be no For some of you, the sign that will rest on you is the favor of God. For some of you, the sign that will walk will rest on you is the healing anointing. For some of you, the sign that will rest on you is strange influence, inexplainable influence. 
for some of you the sign that will rest on you is speed that cannot be described for some of you the sign that will rest on you is a demonstration of the gift of the spirit at a level that men have not seen for some of you the sign that God will give you is empowerment in your mind extraordinary intelligence but by all means may that sign be represented in your life I and the children that the Lord has given me the Bible says we are for signs for signs for signs there are worshipers that will become signs you will not just sing songs there will be mysteries from your voice to the nation there are preachers that will not just be preachers as it were but signs and wonders your life becomes a case study that men use your life to learn God financial signs arise favor signs arise intercessor signs arise in the name of Jesus Christ